All right, let's take a look at the disassembly and assembly of a Sabenza. I know there's a lot of videos out there that cover this, but I just received this small Sabenza Classic today. And I typically disassemble my Sabenzas when I get them because I, I buy most of them used. In fact, I bought all of them used that I own. Um, I like to get in there and, and get what I found is there's usually a lot of like uh, gunked up grease in the pivot, so I like to clean that up and apply my preferred grease, which is uh, Slide Glide. So we'll go through the process here. Uh, I figured I'm doing it anyway. What, what does it hurt to add another video, right? So the specimen that we've got here, I just received it today. This is a small Sabenza 21, or I'm sorry, a small Sabenza Classic, not a 21. Uh, this procedure should work for any Sabenza 21 Classic or regular. Uh, the 25 and the Umnum Zahn, those would be different um, because they don't have a pivot bushing. So this process uh, will be different um, for knives without a pivot bushing. The classic, regular, and 21 all have a pivot bushing. So we'll go ahead and take it apart, give it a quick cleaning, grease it, and put it back together. Uh, what we've got here are the items that we'll need to do that. This is the little Allen key hex wrench whatever you want to call it, that came with this Classic. Um, I've got a couple of cotton swabs here for cleaning, and just a piece of paper towel or something. Uh, my grease that I showed you, and then I use a uh, cheap wooden toothpick to kind of apply that grease. That's what I found is the best method. I use this on my uh, a lot of my pistols and rifles too, uh, especially my six, the six hours, and really I think I use this on all my pistols now. Slide glide, slide glide is really nice, especially on the um, frame or on the slide rails. So, we'll go ahead and go through this process. So, the first thing that I typically do is I will loosen these two screws just a little bit. Not a whole lot. And then I will completely remove the pivot screw. And this is what makes the pivot bushing nice, uh, is that you don't actually have to disassemble the entire knife if you don't want to. Um, you can just slide the blade out. So I'm now as I do this, I'm going to take pressure off of that lock bar so it's not pushing on that blade tang. And with that pivot bushing, this whole assembly will just slide right out. So you've got your washers there. And you can see the pivot bushing there in the center. And notice I, I kept that lock bar pressure on that. And I'm just going to ease that over. I don't want it to slap into the uh, presentation side titanium scale. So we're just going to set this guy off to the side and my little uh, female threads there. Now I'm going to fully disassemble this one. Um, now that I've got the blade out, I'm going to go ahead and come here and take out my remaining fasteners on the handle. And I've never done this on a video, so it's kind of weird looking through the screen to do this. So, And that was the spacer that just slipped out from in between the scales. So bear with me if uh, I fumble a little bit here. Like I said, it's a little bit strange. Now, what I typically do, because I, I don't know how much this really matters. Um, I'm just a little bit anal like this. I like to keep my parts all in the same place that they were on the knife. So I'll kind of put these little sub-assemblies back together so I know what went where. Uh, and typically, Oh, with this one, it's not so important, but I, I even like to make sure that the bushing uh, here and the pivot bushing are in the same orientation that they were when the knife was assembled. Um, just kind of an anal retentive thing. With, with this backspacer, I don't worry about that too much. But So we've got that guy out. Now we're going to come back here and remove our stop pin. Here I'll just go ahead and pull this whole 
assembly apart there. And this, um, I decided I'm not hugely fond of lanyards, uh, especially on the small Sabenzas. I prefer them without. So I'm not going to put this back on. This is a really nice lanyard, though. This lanyard bead is beautiful. Um, I don't know if this was factory or not, uh, but it's, it's got beautiful blue anodizing there um, in the divots and even on the face of those. So really nice lanyard, but I'm not going to put that back on, so we're going to set that off to the side. So here, I'm going to be careful to take my stop pin bushing out like that. And then I'm going to take that stop pin bushing, slide it right back on here, and reconstruct my little sub assembly. Man, look at the white balance change on that video as I put different colored things. That auto white balance keeps changing back and forth. So I'll set these guys off to the side here. Now, so this, um, when you hear people talk about the pivot bushing on a Sabenza and how that is really what makes a Sabenza a Sabenza or part of what makes it a Sabenza and makes them so nice, um, that they're talking about this guy right here. Okay, you see, I just pushed it out. Now these are built to tolerances such that that bushing, the sliding back and forth right there, that bushing is exactly the same width as the blade plus these two washers. So that's what allows you to slide that whole assembly in and out. It will capture those washers. And when it's all tight, you're, and then you're also able to tighten the knife down when it's reassembled. Just tighten them down, and the handle slabs tighten onto this pivot bushing instead of clamping down on the washers and the blade. So you should be able to tighten everything down, and it should not affect the um, resistance that the blade experiences as you open and close it. Uh, where with like a Sabenza 25 or most of your other folding knives, they don't have this pivot bushing. Uh, the the um, blade rotates about the pivot screw itself. So this guy right here would just be bigger and it would slide in through the hole in your blade. Uh, but the downside to that is that you want to try and eliminate blade play when it's at lockup. So you got to tighten that down. And you want to get a balance between no blade play or minimal blade play and still having a smooth opening action on a knife. And the Sabenza 21 classic and regular kind of eliminates that worry. You just tighten it down and it should always move pretty freely. So anyway, enough about that. Let's go ahead and disassemble this. Right here, I'm going to be careful. Push that bushing out. There, one of my washers came off there, which is fine. You do want, or uh, you want to keep the washers oriented properly, so whichever side was facing towards the blade, you want to keep that side facing towards the, the blade when you reassemble the knife. Push that little guy out. Like I said, forgive me for fumbling a little bit here. Uh, it is weird to do this through a screen. And I'm doing this so that, there we go. I can kind of keep that oriented the way that I want it. So I'm going to pull that guy off. I'm going to stick my threads through there like that, and just quickly reassemble that. And you may or may not do that. I, I do it. I don't know if it really makes that much of a difference, but I do it. All right. Now these washers are a little bit different. Um, the newer washers that you'll see actually have little holes drilled in. Uh, they're little pockets to help capture grease. So these are older washers, obviously. And here, usually you can tell the side that was toward this, the blade because it'll be smoother and shinier um, from rubbing as the blade rotates. This one, I can't really see much of a difference between them, though. So my, my own system is I, I typically take the uh, side that was towards the blade and face it down towards my work area surface. So that's just my own thing. So now the Sabenza is fully disassembled. 
so we can take it apart or we can uh, continue cleaning it wiping it down and then we'll grease it so we'll take a little rag here and just wipe that off um, this is a little bit weird um, all the sabenzas I have and have disassembled they'll have a letter right here uh, v means that the blade is S35VN, S means that it's S30V, steel. I'm not sure what what C is. I don't think I've seen that. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm flaking out on that a little bit, I don't know. I don't remember seeing C on a blade though. So, come in here and just kind of wipe out a little bit within the pivot hole. There's not a whole lot in there. Um, and if we look in here, let's just see. Yeah, there we go. So if you look, you'll see some little pockets, very slightly machined areas right there, a little notch. And I, I believe that's to help try and capture like some debris or grease, extra grease. You get caught in those pockets there. There's one there. I think typically there's three. See one right there. One right there. I'm gonna pull this up just a little bit so I can get a better look. I just see two of them on this one, I think. Typically I think there's three. But you can see them in there. So, I'm going to wipe this guy off. Okay. And, set him there. And then our washers. And be very careful with these. You don't want to bend them or anything. Keep them flat. So, we're just going to kind of wipe those down. They're very shiny. This is a. Uh, I think they quit making the Classic in 2008. I think that's when it was replaced by the Sabenza 21. Uh, this is a 2008 Classic, so this would have been the last year that they were made. There we go. And you'll notice that one of these washers is significantly smaller in diameter than the other one. Um, this is the one that goes towards your lock bar so that the lock bar can move in and out and clear that washer. We've got the, our washers cleaned. Let's take a look at our pivot. That's our pivot bushing. I'll typically take that and wipe it a little bit while it's on here. Get the exterior portion. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to save that one for a second. I typically do that one last. This is our stop pin with its stop pin bushing. And try and be careful to keep that oriented the way that it was. And I'll just run a cotton swab in there. Just kind of clean it out. Never imagine it's terribly dirty. Just set that down. this post in there. Reassemble that. Okay. Same back here. And I found um, I actually really enjoy taking these Sabenzas apart because it is, um, it's really easy to do. Uh, if you're somebody who likes to tinker with stuff and, and take stuff apart, then a Sabenza, especially the, whoops, especially the 21 classic, regular, they're nice knives to have because um, you can take them apart, put them back together. I, I've never had Loctite or anything that I required to keep these things from coming loose. The, the 21s and classics, and I have one regular. Um, they all, um, 
have stayed together really well for me without using any Loctite, so that's nice. It's just that backspacer. Let's take a look at our little handle slabs here. Let's take a look. Um, you can see the date codes on them. This is Alpha 08. That means that this was made in the first quarter of 2008. So you'll always either see an A, B, C, or D here, and then a two-digit identifier for the year of manufacture. And you see what I was talking about a little bit. This grease actually isn't too bad. A lot of times it's uh, it's more dried out than that. Just gonna wipe it down. Um, this did come with a pocket clip on it. I greatly prefer uh, my Sebenzas without the pocket clip, both large and small, so I immediately replaced that. Um, I think this makes Sebenza number 14 for me. I really need to sell some Sebenzas. I was supposed to limit my collection to 10. That was kind of the limit I set for myself, and I am not adhering to that very well. But I've got pocket clip inserts on all of them now, except for one, because I just picked this new one up, and I just bought all those inserts for the 13. So um, one of the ones I'm considering selling, I, I pulled the insert off of that one and, and put it on this one because I do not see this one leaving my collection. I, I The 21 and the Classic, there's really just some superficial differences between them, uh, but I do prefer the Classic a little bit. I like the little, what I consider to be slight refinements on the, on the Classic. For instance, um, on the edge, you've got a kind of a double bevel. If I can get this thing to focus close, there we go. You kind of see it. There's actually two surfaces on this edge. I don't know if you can see that very well. See what I'm talking about? Where on the let's pull out. Um, this is actually one of the ones. This is the one I'd think about selling. I put the pocket clip back on. So this is a 21. And if you compare the edges there, you'll see that this is just one beveled surface where there it kind of has two surfaces um, on the bevel. It's just, a, I don't know, it doesn't really make a difference. You can't feel it when you're holding it. It's just a little refinement, little touch that I like. I also really like the way this looks, the, the classic MM, meaning 2000. That's when the, cl uh, the classic was released in the year 2000. Um, and let me pull another one out here. So you've got a couple of different things. You've got the classic MM, and then the first 21s were just blank here. They didn't have anything. Uh, and I believe it was in 2010, they added the Idaho Made stamp. So this is a 2010 Insingo Small, Plain Jane, uh, 2008 classic, and then this guy is a 2011 uh, Small 21 with micarta. So, just kind of show some of the, some of the differences there. You can see a little bit of difference in the micarta pattern on this too. This has like a squiggly type of pattern where this is more of a, a line. Both of them have a bit of a greenish hue, uh, more so on the on the classic. All right. So that's our lock bar face. Uh, they do harden that, the lock bar face on these, to try and reduce wear because you've got a piece of titanium rubbing against a steel blade tang. The harder material is eventually going to wear on the softer material. So, in an order, to, in an effort to uh, minimize that a little bit, they harden this lock face. And then here's your detent ball. And when it's opening, when the blade opens, the only thing that it contacts on there is that little tiny detent ball. And you can see the track that it makes right there. Here's your detent hole. Okay. So when the when the knife is folded, that little detent ball engages that hole, and that's what gives you your detent that keeps the blade from just swinging freely open on the knife. And I'm going to take a little bit of gunk right inside of that. See, I got that right out of there. End of my toothpick. All 
right. Jesus, video's already been going for 20 minutes. I am babbling away on this thing. Just kind of use this to clean out some of those holes. Try and get moving a little bit on this. And of course, people's methods for all this, I'm sure vary a little bit. People's preferred lubricants, grease that they use, will be a little bit different. So, I think that should be pretty good. Shiny spot there. For our purposes here, I think that's pretty much going to do it. So, we're going to go ahead and go through a bit of reassembly here. And once again, I'm not putting the lanyard back in. That's just a personal preference. Um, you know what, though? I know that I am not going to carry this knife. So I'm probably just going to, I use a lot of these knives just in photographs, especially gun photos. I do a lot of gun and knife photos. I use knives for props in the gun photos and stuff. I've been doing a lot more knife photos lately, but uh, I know this is just going to be for props. So I really like this lanyard bead. It looks nice. I think for now, I'm going to go ahead and put it back in there. Uh, and as I was talking about, these Sabenzas are so easy to assemble and disassemble um, that, you know, if I decide I want it out of there later, it's a really simple task to do that. So... We'll go ahead and put it back in there for now. I'm going to pull this one out for just a second. Now, you'll notice on the 21, this is another subtle difference between the Classic and the 21. Um, let's go ahead and set this down, and I'll get out my other small Micarta Classic. I do have two of these. Now, if you notice, the female threaded post on the Classic do not have the little hex head. They are completely smooth and polished. I really like that on the Classic. I, I, I just think it adds a nice little touch. Um, I've never had to use the hex head side on these, so I just, I'd prefer it not be there. I just, I like this look on the Classic. So, the Classics, when they came from the factory, uh, the polished heads would be on this side. So you had these three polished heads, and then you have, this is always going to be here, unless you completely take off um, the pocket clip or insert, and they're just going to have a loose hole there. That doesn't look good. So uh, a lot of people, myself included, uh, like to flip these so that all of the hex heads are on one side. And then on this side, you get a nice clean look with the uh, polished rounded heads. And then you got the thumb stud down there. I, th I just think that looks a little bit nicer. So another shot comparing that. covered that and go ahead back with our reassembly and so we're going to take our polished rounded post head there and our backspacer once again forgive me if this is a little bit fumbling inserted here. There we go. I'll get that guy started. And we'll just do this enough to keep this keep this thing together. I'm not looking to make anything too tight right now. Here we've got our whoops, wrong one our stop pin here. Put the side down that I want going towards the post. Post in here. You know what? Whoops. Let me 
have been a mistake. Ah, <laughs> I don't typically do this with a lanyard back in. So now I can't rotate that thing like I would normally do. All right. Give me just a second here. I look like a fool. All right. Take you out of there. It's going to take a little bit of dexterity to get this done, which we've already discussed is not real easy when you're looking through the camera. All right, so let's get our little stop pin bushing back on there. All right, get all three of those back on. This was the screw for our rearmost position. Well, it started in there. There we go. getting there. All right. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and tighten those down just to where they are snug and then I'm going to take back them off about a half a turn or so. Just so there's a little bit of play in between those guys. I'm going to set that guy off to the side. So now we get to our blade assembly. All right. My method, I put the side down that I want to go towards my post. Now, what I'll do with my grease, very liberal application of this, of this grease. I'm just going to a little tiny dab of it. I'll put just a little bit inside of my pivot hole. And once again, I, I don't know, people may do this a little bit differently. Put it, put more or less. I know different people use different lubricants. Put just a little bit in there. And, okay. Just trying to get this correct in my mind. So there's the blade. Now we're going to put our pivot bushing back in, and let's get this right in my head. I want this is going to be the side that goes towards the post. Let me make sure I get that reoriented. There we go. You can see a little bit of grease came out there. Smear that on there just a little bit. Now, take just a little bit more of that grease. Put it right here, and you can see the outline of where the washer sits. So I'll try and keep that within that area. Keep the grease within that area. Just smear a little bit. It it doesn't take a lot. This slide glide is really, really slick stuff. And we'll put a little bit on this side. You can see the much smaller washer right in there. A little tiny circle it makes. Slip out of there. Ah. <laughs> Very difficult to do this through the, through the I, I haven't tried to do anything like this on camera and I know I know there's a lot of videos out there of people who have done this and I, I'm gaining a tremendous amount of respect for the people who've done those videos now because it is it is very awkward to do this so the way I do it I, I put my washers down um, this side down towards my work surface is the one that goes towards the blade Push that guy right 
make sure you get the right washer on the right side. It will be obvious because of the little worn area the washer sets on. So there we go. Um, I don't put any grease on the outside portions because nothing should be moving over there really. Um, it's just the blade moving in between these washers and around that pivot bushing. So we've, we've put grease on all the areas that should be moving. Of course, there's no reason to put grease in areas that won't be moving. So now we're ready to reassemble, and this is what's nice. I've left just enough, you know, little clearance where those will spread apart, and this whole assembly should just slide right back in. Let's see if I can do this on the camera. Oh, that was a complete mess. Here, let's do this. There we go. Slides right in there, and now I'm going to take pressure. Or I'm going to push the lock bar over so that it clears. It's not engaging the back of the blade tang or anything. Probably should have tightened those a little bit more. If I weren't doing this through a camera, it would be a lot easier. There we go. All right. So now I've got my pivot pin back in there. I'm go ahead and let my let my lock bar come over. And hold everything in. My last fastener here. watching this, you're saying, hey, dumbass, you just inserted that whole thing incorrectly from what you said you were going to do. So I've got my shiny ones over here, the smooth heads, and I just put this thing in backwards. Pretty sure that I had aligned the pivot bushing correctly within the blade, though, for, for doing this the way that I intended to do it. There we go. All right, that looks much better. She started there. All right. Now I'll just make that snug, and then what I, I'll typically do is I'll come back here. Now, um, as far as how much to tighten these fasteners on the Sabenzas, um, I'll typically just take it, I'll make it snug, and then I'll just, in order to um, get it as tight as I want it, I'll take and bend this until, or rotate until I start to see a slight bend in the handle of the of the wrench and that's as tight as I take it um, I never um, I never have an issue with with these sabenzas coming loose when I do that so slight bend in there and our last one up here see typically if you disassemble a, most folding knives or a Savenza 25 and Umnum's on um, this is where you would have to start toying around and saying well I need to find a happy medium between um, the uh, getting the blade play out and having a smooth opening and closing knife. 
So we've just kind of torqued those all down to, and it's just, oh man, that's smooth. I'll typically take and work the action just a little bit to kind of move the grease around, get it distributed. And I should have also put just a tiny, I forgot to do that, put a tiny bit of grease where that, um, um, detent ball rides. I forgot to put a little bit right on that track. I, I just smeared just a, just the tiniest bit on there. Um, so I'll, I may I may take this back down a little bit and, and add some there, but I'm not going to do that on the video right now. Let's see if this will drop free. Oh, wow. Look at that. Very nice. So you just push the lock bar over and, yep, gravity takes over. And that is how a well-used Sabenza should work. Most of my 21s, after I disassemble them and grease them with this slide glide, um, most of them now um, will free fall like that. Uh, some of them didn't when it when I got them and they had the grease that kind of dried out and such. They weren't doing that, but this one they are. So there you go. Disassembly, reassembly of a Sabenza Classic. You see it's got the little snail trail there from the pocket clip. So, yeah. Just got this one in today. I really like it. It is not leaving my collection. They don't make these classics anymore. I like the little refinements on them. Uh, I picked this one up on Blade Forums. Really smooth transaction. I've purchased all of my Sabenzas on Blade Forums, except for one on eBay and one on Sig Forum. So, I recommend if you're... Uh, if you're looking to try out a Chris Reeve knife, um, I check out Blade Forums. Uh, there's a lot of good people on there. You can find good deals on these. And you can buy them on the second uh, secondhand market and try them out. If you don't like them, you can resell them. Uh, you're not likely to lose any money. If it is, it may be some shipping fees, PayPal fees, but it's nothing significant. So I recommend trying one out on there uh, to see if you really like these knives because they are a little bit pricey. So. I hope that was informative. Uh, maybe you learned something, I don't know, seen something that you hadn't before. Um, thanks for watching.